Blessed greetings. You are tuned to the WSLM Radio Ministry Podcast, where we stand for God's truth, not man's traditions, and we bring you straight Bible truth for these last days. The WSLM Radio Ministry Podcast is a virtual outreach ministry of Sacrificial Lamb Ministries. We are outreach driven. Hello there, everyone. This is Pastor Vince Wilson, host of the WSLM Radio Ministry Podcast. It is Sunday, February 19th, 2023. And this is that time of the week where we bring you a brand new recorded episode. As we've been doing so far, by God's grace, we have been bringing you a brand new episode every Sunday. The only thing that has changed since last Sunday is now on Sundays, our Sunday episodes will have a name. So for today and moving forward, the name of our Sunday episodes will be called First Day Power Surge. Again, First Day Power Surge. So, Pastor, why the name First Day Power Surge? Well, Sunday is the first day of the week. Uh, Contrary to what many of us have been taught and what many of us still believe, Sunday is the first day of the week. And I won't get into the history of why it changed, how it changed, and all that kind of stuff. But please just believe me that Sunday is the first day of the week. So, first day. And then Power Surge. Well, Because Sunday is the first day of the week, it's the start of a new week, we all need a little power surge, something to help us to uh, jumpstart our week, spiritually that is, so we can make it through the upcoming week. Hence the name First Day Power Surge. So during First Day Power Surge, we will study the Bible and we will go a little deeper every week into into the Bible. We will study a topic. It may take several weeks to go through a particular topic, such as today. Today, we are finishing up part two of our study that we started last Sunday. Last Sunday, we started a study entitled Sin. Can we go too far? Sin. Can we go too far? So that was the question that I posed to you last week. If you haven't listened to that episode, I encourage you to go back and listen to our lesson study or to part one of our lesson study last week entitled Sin. Can we go too far? And today, by God's grace, we want to finish up our study on that particular topic. Sin. Can we go too far? Our foundational text for this lesson study comes from Hebrews uh, chapter 12 verses 16 and 17, and I'll read them again. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 16 and 17, the Bible says, Lest there be any fornicator or profane person, as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Again, that's Hebrews 12, verses 16 and 17. And you also may want to write down uh, Genesis uh, chapter 25, verses 29 through 34, as well as uh, Genesis 27, verses 30 through 40. So in all the scriptures and all the verses that I just gave you, Uh, We're talking about Esau and Jacob. The story of Esau and Jacob. In verse 16, as we just read, Hebrews 12, 16 says, Esau, who for one morsel of meat, sold his birthright. So if you want to get the bigger picture of the account of Esau and Jacob, I encourage you to read those verses that I just shared with you. The verses from the book of Genesis as well as Hebrews. Now, what I'm going to do to start this particular part of the the lesson, I'm going to do a review of what we covered last week, just a quick review. And uh, again, if you have not listened to last week's lesson, 
or, or part one of our study. I encourage you to go back and listen to part one of our study so you, can, you know, uh, so you can get caught up on uh, you know what we're about to cover today, and it'll all make sense to you. But last week we uh, we answered the question, "Who is the Holy Spirit?" And we looked at four facts about the Holy Spirit. We said that He is closely associated with God in Christ. Uh, he took part in creation. He descended upon Christ at his baptism, and he represents Christ on earth. We also uh, learned from from uh, looking at another question, we looked at another question, and that question is, what is the work of the Holy Spirit? We learned that he convinces men of sin, he convinces men of righteousness, he convinces men of judgment, he does the work of a comforter, he brings about uh, the new birth. And that was our second question. So we basically, last week, we answered two questions. Again, those questions are, who is the Holy Spirit and what is the work of the Holy Spirit? And uh, and that was where we left off. Actually, we left off answering, still answering the question, what is the work of the Holy Spirit? So I just gave you a few parts of the answer already. And I told you, the last thing I told you was, he brings about the new birth. So we're going to pick up answering that question this week. But before we go any further, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this lesson study. Uh, Thank you so much for waking us up this morning that we could study your word together, that we could draw closer uh, closer to you through the study of your word. And may everything that we learned today, everything that we've been learning so far, Help us to not keep this lesson to ourselves. Help us to share this with others that they may be drawn closer to you as well. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So again, we're still in the middle of answering uh, the second question, which again, what is the work of the Holy Spirit? So uh, picking up where we left off, the Holy Spirit, he dwells in men. And as I said last week in uh, in part one, I will give you some, uh, you know, some Bible texts to write down. You can go back and look them up in your Bible in your Bible later. And this is all just to, you know, just to save time, because if I was to really go deep, 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 um, we could be here for more than an hour. And I just understand that many people, uh, you know, like myself, many people are busy or on the go. They don't have the time or maybe don't want to make the time to really just stop and just listen to an hour long uh, podcast episode. So I tried to condense it uh, by God's grace. You know, we will get something out of this lesson, but I'm going to leave the rest up to you to go back and study deeper, uh, study deeper on your own. So he dwells in men and I'll give you two uh, texts, uh, John 14 and 17. And by the way, from time to time, I may read the verses in their entirety, or otherwise I may just say, okay, jot this verse down uh, and go look it up for yourself in your Bible. So he dwells in men, John fourteen and 17, which says, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth, in, uh, uh, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Again, that's John 14 and 17. So, yes, it is through the Spirit that Christ dwells in us. He dwells in men. Uh, Colossians 1 and 27, you'll want to jot that down. And uh, and the Spirit writes God's law in our hearts. Uh, Take a look at 2 Corinthians 3 and 3, Hebrews 8 and 10, Romans 8 and 10 as well. Again, 2 Corinthians 3 and 3. Hebrews 8 and 10, and Romans 8 and 10. So Christ dwells in us by the Spirit, and the Spirit writes the law in our hearts. So uh, so that was point number six uh, concerning what is the work of the Holy Spirit. Point number six, he dwells in men. Number seven, he intercedes for men. Romans 8 and 26, you'll, jot, you'll, you'll want to jot that down. Romans 8 and 26. Since the Spirit dwells in us, He knows all our needs. Isn't that true? The the Holy Spirit knows all of our needs. When He dwells in us, He knows what we need. He gives men power to witness. 
So jot down Acts 1 and 8, and I'll read Acts 1 and 8, which says, Ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. Again, Acts 1 and 8. So we should be willing to witness for Christ. Each and every one of us should be willing to witness for Christ. What has God done for you or through you? What is God doing right now in your life? What has he delivered you from? So we should be willing to witness for Christ. He gives men the power to witness. Number nine, point number nine, he guides men. He guides men. Romans 8 and 14 says, as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Also, you'll want to write down John 16 and 13. But that was point number nine. Point number 10, he seals men unto the day of redemption. And you'll want to write down Ephesians 4 and 30, which says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. You may want to jot down Ephesians 1 and 13, as well as Revelation 7 and 3. So the Spirit is not the seal. He is the agent who seals us with the seal of God. So we've just answered, uh, we finally answered the second question, what is the work of the Holy Spirit? And we took a look at uh, 10 different points, along with scriptures, to back them up. Uh, 10 different points that help us or um, uh, lead us to the answer of that question. What is the work of the Holy Spirit? Now, today we're going to go ahead and get into the third question. Again, if you're not, if you're not familiar with these lessons that we go over or that I go over with you here on the podcast, or if you've ever worshipped with us in person... These lessons are designed simply to be a question and answer. They're a uh, question and answer format. So, uh, you know, we take a look at the question and we go to the Bible for the answers, right? All the answers are from the Bible. And each question may have uh, multiple points, just like we just answered. What is the work of the Holy Spirit? There were 10 different points uh, to answer that question. And all the points were supported by the Bible. So let's go ahead and move forward. What is presumptuous sins? Oh, what is what is presumptuous sin? Oh, I love to preach and teach on this one because this is where many of us are today. Uh, a presumptuous sin is deliberate sin against light. I'll say it again. Presumptuous sin is deliberate sin against light. What does the Bible say about that? Psalm 19 and 13. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. And that's uh, that's David speaking there. So the presumptuous sin is choosing our own way instead of God's and presuming that God will always forgive. Friend, you, someone you know, even myself, you know, we have been in a place where we have done things we know God was not pleased with. Oh, well, God loves me. He knows my heart. Um, I'm still saved or going to be saved. I'm still going to heaven. No, friend. That is a real world explanation of uh, presumptuous sins. Or a presumptuous sin. We know better. We don't do better. You know the old saying, if you know better, you're supposed to do better. But the bottom line is we just believe, oh, well, God loves me anyway. I'm still going to do what I want to do, even though it's wrong. I know he's not pleased with it. And he's going to forgive me. Yes, God will forgive you. If we go to him with a sincere heart, yes, he will forgive us. But he doesn't expect us to keep doing the same old thing over and over and over again. All right, I'm sure you get the point. So I'll read this part again. The, uh, uh, the presumptuous sin is choosing our own way instead of God's. And presuming that God will always forgive, it leads to the unpardonable sin. You've heard of that before, maybe, right? Or maybe you've heard of that before. It leads to the unpardonable sin. Noah's message was rejected, and a whole generation was lost. It is, it is dangerous business to presume that a good God will forgive all sins under all conditions, and therefore, to sin deliberately on this basis. So, yeah, we should not have the mindset that we're just going to just, you know, again, uh, deliberately sin. And again, as I said, oh, well, you know, I'm going to heaven anyway. I'll just keep, 
I just keep doing things that I know are wrong or you know, things that God is not pleased with. So, you know, I'm just going to just list for you the following experiences in the Bible illustrate this. So these are some some biblical illustrations. Uh, uh, Nadab and Abihu from Leviticus 10 and 1. Esau and the birthright, as we just started our, our lesson with. Uh, Genesis 25, uh, 29 through 34. Hebrews 12, 16 through 17. Ananias and Sapphira. Acts 5, 1 through 11. And the people in Noah's day, and even our own day uh, today. Genesis 6, 3 through 7. Luke 17, 26 through 27. Again, we are answering the question, what is presumptuous sin? So we've just answered that question, what is presumptuous sin? We just defined what presumptuous sin is. I gave you a real world uh, example or a definition of what uh, presumptuous sin is. And we need to be careful, as the Bible says, not to, um, you know, you know, that our sin does not lead us to the unpardonable sin. What is the unpardonable sin? Well, we're going to get a little deeper into that, but um, in just a moment. But in, in essence, the unpardonable, the unpardonable sin is is basically when the Holy Spirit removes Himself, um, you know, from our lives. In other words, the Holy Spirit is the person. You know, He convicts us of sin, right? He lets us know, hey, this is wrong. You shouldn't be doing it. You know, you shouldn't be doing this, etc. But there's going to come a time where we are so. Um, I'll just say we're so hard-headed sometimes, right? You know, you know, we're so hard-headed, we're so set on sinning and doing what we want to do. Eventually, the Holy Spirit will be, uh, you know, he'll draw himself from us and um, we will no longer hear that Holy Spirit's voice convicting us of our sin and sin will lead to uh, eternal separation or the second death, which will separate us from God and Christ in heaven for eternity. So the bottom line is we don't want presumptuous sin to lead us down that road where we are led to the un unpardonable sin, where the Holy Spirit removes, he just removes himself, he doesn't convict us of sin anymore. And, you know, just, um, you know, the Bible says that uh, God turned them over to a uh, reprobate mind. I throw that in there as well. So I think you get the point. We, uh, we want to stay away from uh, presumptuous sin. Let's go to the next question. We're almost at the end of the lesson, actually. What is the sin against the Holy Ghost? Well, the definition is it is the, reje the rejection of the Spirit's call. And that's kind of what, what, what I alluded to just a moment ago. What is the sin against the Holy Ghost? It is the rejection of the Spirit's call. Uh, take a look at Matthew 12, uh, 24 through 32. So just a further explanation. It is persistently rejecting the Spirit's call to repentance. Um, if we do not shield our conscience, it will become hard and callous, and we will tread the paths of sin with utter abandon, giving no heed to the promptings of the Spirit of God. So we must remember, no sin is too great, though. No sin is too great for God to forgive if it is confessed and put away. The sin against the Holy Ghost is the failure to confess or put away sin and unbelief in Christ, our Savior. So that is a simple, straightforward explanation of the sin against the Holy Ghost. I mentioned uh, about the uh, the unpardonable sin just a moment ago. Now we're going to go a little deeper into what is the unpardonable sin. So can a man know when he has committed the unpardonable sin? Uh, well, many will commit the sin and think that all is well. And this is what Jesus said. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 7, verses 21 through 23, now everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into, into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will uh, profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. That's what Jesus said. It's right in the Bible, Matthew seven, twenty-one through 23. So many will commit this sin and think that all is well. Uh, kind of what I said earlier, oh, all is well. I know what I'm doing is wrong, but, you know, the Lord will forgive me. You know, God will forgive me. I'm still going to heaven. You know, God knows my heart. So that's the trap that many of us have fallen into and will continue to fall into if we do not repent 
and ask the Holy Spirit to, uh, you know, to uh, remove sin or help us to, you know, to get sin out of our lives, to get the victory over sin. When human probation closes, many will seek for the word of God, but it will be too late. Probationary time will be over. Take a look at Amos 11, I'm sorry, Amos 8, verses 11 through 12. I just jot that down. I'm not going to read that in its entirety. Amos 8, 11 through 12. Um, so, but you know, we just need to be thankful to God that he will accept all who come to him in sincerity. He will accept all who come to, in sincerity to Jesus. John 6 and 37 says, he that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. If we go to Jesus, Jesus, I'm sorry. I repent for what I've done. Please help me to get this victory. Help me to get the victory over sin. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me to get the victory over sin. The Bible says, him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Jesus would not uh, turn away from anyone that comes to him in sincerity and wants to get delivered from sin. John 6 and 37 is our Bible reference. So if a man will come to Christ and accept him as Lord and Savior, in faith confess his sins and fully surrender to do God's will, he will know or he may know that he has not committed this sin. If he does not come, he may know that he is in danger of committing it. Again, uh, what are we talking about? What is it? We're talking about the unpardonable sin. The unpardonable sin. So friend, uh, be of good carriage and put away every sin. God will help you to be victorious. Amen. God will help us to be victorious if we come to him with a sincere heart. Again, uh, asking to get the victory over sin. Asking for help to get the victory over sin. He is there with us. He is waiting with open arms to help us to get the victory over sin. If we just come to him with a sincere heart. Friend, that that actually concludes our lesson. We've completed the lesson uh, entitled Sin. Can we go too far? And I think we've answered the question. Again, if you haven't listened to part one, go back and listen to part one. But if this is your first time listening and you know uh, uh, we're going through part two of our lesson, I think you get the idea. I think you understand the answer or you know the answer. Yes, we can go too far in sin if we do not confess, if we do not repent, if we do not go to Jesus and ask him to help us get victory over sin with a sincere heart. So it is possible that we can go too far. We can go too far. And, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, as we say, uh, grieve the Holy Spirit, uh, commit the unpardonable sin. We don't want that to happen, friend. We want, as you know, while the Holy Spirit is convicting us of our sins, we want to take heed and allow the Holy Spirit to help us get the victory over sin. We don't want to be, um, you know, we don't want to commit the unpardonable sin is what I'm trying to say. I hope this lesson was a blessing to you. Uh, again, this concludes uh, part two of our lesson study on sin. Can we go too far? I'll say it one more time. If you have not, if you if you, if you haven't listened to uh, part one from last week, please go back and listen to that and put it together with uh, with part two, and it'll all make sense to you. Again, this is our Sunday episode, now entitled First Day Power Surge." The idea is that the Holy Spirit's power will give us that surge to start a new week and to make it through this new week. There may be some things that may come up in our lives this week, things unexpected, but let's continue to hold on to to Jesus and ask him to help us to make it through whatever we're going through this week. If something was to come up, let us go to him, ask him to help us to make it through this upcoming week. It's already the first day of the week, which is Sunday, and we are looking for that first day power surge from the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Loving Father, thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Uh, we pray that this uh, this upcoming week, um, that we will have strength to endure whatever uh, we may encounter this week. Please be with us throughout this week and help us to Stay connected with you through prayer, Bible study, 
and uh, to empower us to uh, to go out and be a witness for you. Let others know what you are doing or have done in our lives this week. Thank you so much for this Bible study. Help us to continue to study your word outside of this weekly Bible study. Help us to be not just hearers of your, of your word, but to be doers of your word as well. Help us to be like the Bereans to study uh, diligently, to study each and every day. Help us to uh, study, to show ourselves approved, and to rightly divide the word of truth. Thank you so much. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're doing right now. Thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, thank you for tuning in to the WSLM Radio Ministry Podcast. This is our Sunday edition entitled First Day Power Surge. This is your host, Pastor Vince Wilson, founding pastor and teacher at Sacrificial Lamb Ministries. We are outreach driven. And here on the podcast, we also say we stand for God's truth, not man's traditions. And we bring you straight Bible truth for these last days. I pray that you have a blessed week. And actually, uh, join us this Wednesday for another episode right here on the WSLM Radio Ministry Podcast. Take care.